Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Rushcliffe series. This is the southernmost district in Nottinghamshire and it contains 59 civil parishes of England. And there's some corkers down here. Let's dive in and check one out. Welcome back to Rushcliffe again, everybody, and to a village in which a famous footballer once lived, a former Manchester United player, although he lived here when he played for Nottingham Forest. Who might that have been, I wonder? We'll find out as we journey around the parish of Scarrington. <laughs> Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Scarrington, Filthy Farm. This week in Rushcliffe, we're back over to the eastern side of the district and we find ourselves in a place called Scarrington. Its name means mucky, dirty or filthy farm, so it might not have the nicest of welcomes in that regard, but Scarrington is definitely what you'd term an affluent village. Recorded in the Doomsday Book as a hamlet with no more than 27 houses, Scarrington was once the property of the Crown. In the 18th and 19th centuries, it was a village dominated by farming and shared several landowners with Aslockton. It steadily held a population of around 200 through those centuries, and its size changed little, until the 20th, when some building took place along Hawksworth Road. A few working farms remain today, but most inhabitants commute to work or school. It's kind of ironic that Scarrington, when viewed on an overhead map, is laid out in a slightly misshapen arc, because its most famous landmark is literally a pile of metal objects, which are that same shape. At the eastern end of the village, outside the former blacksmith, there's a 15-foot high tower built of horseshoes. It's easily the most striking feature of this quiet and laid-back village. We'll discuss that and plenty more in the murky drizzle which descended upon Nottinghamshire in late May 2024. Let's go. We start at the far southwestern extreme of Scarrington at a pumping station. Not the most inspiring of landmarks, I will grant you. Neither is Manor Farm next door, but between them at this point, it's the best Scarrington can do. This is a village that doesn't have a great deal of landmarks. Most of the best ones are at the other end. This western end is an eclectic mix of property, ranging from the old to the new and small to the frighteningly large. It's all typically Nottinghamshire though, red brick houses as far as the eye can see, with some working farms and old barns thrown in here and there. Scarrington lies mainly within a conservation area which was established in 1990 and then later extended in 2010. It includes four listed buildings, several mature trees and wide grass verges. It's not hard to see why property here is considered sought after. Not all the residences were originally houses. This is an old Wesleyan Methodist chapel which was built in 1818 by the Watson family. Thomas Watson was the lord of the manor at that time and had three brothers who lived at Red House Farm. Watson was, indeed, an important name to Scarrington, but it wasn't the only one. 
Another surname pertinent to Scarrington is Flower, but the main one is Shipman. This isn't the only village in which we'll make reference to them. They held land all over this part of Nottinghamshire and first possessed Scarrington in 1567. They were so important that they even had their own family pew in the chancel of the church. The Flower family held one too. The royalist poet and playwright Thomas Shipman was born in the village in 1632 and also died here in 1680. He was perhaps best well known for being the author of Carolina, or Loyal Poems, published posthumously. As we've ambled down this street we haven't seen many amenities have we? This phone box is pretty much all there's been up to now. Scarrington remains attractive and some famous names have lived here in recent times. Former Manchester United captain Roy Keane lived here when he played for Nottingham Forest in the early 1990s. Born here and arguably Scarrington's most famous daughter is Sarah Cherm, the actress best known for playing the part of Sarah in At Home with the Braithwaite. Let's see how many other famous names see my card on this parish notice board, shall we? Okay, so far everything we've seen has been to the western end of Scarrington. It's not really been all that exciting, it's just been a few houses, big ones I might add, and a few farms and farm buildings thrown in for good measure. All the interesting stuff here is at the eastern end of Scarrington. You can see behind me the tower of the church. We'll have a look at that in a moment, but we're going to go beyond it first because there's something else which is quite tall, which a lot of people know in this village. Let's go and find the horseshoe pile. Now if you cast your mind back to the Aslockton episode, you may remember we met a forge in that village. Outside it was one of these. This is a horseshoe pile, and this one often gets a lot of attention from Scarrington's visitors, because it's right on the roadside. It stands 15 feet tall, outside the Grade 2 listed former blacksmith's forge. Although it's not easy to determine exactly how many horseshoes are in it, the best guesses stand at around 50,000. The pile was constructed by the village blacksmith over a period of 20 years between 1945 and 1965. This is why horseshoes feature on the village sign. Almost just as impressive as the pile is the landmark literally right next to it, the Scarrington Pinfold. We're used to the idea of a pinfold by now of course, so there's no need to explain its function, but Scarrington's is kind of special. It's unusual because it's almost perfectly circular, and its one continuous wall is 1.83 metres tall. There are similar, almost exact copies of this pinfold at Flintham and Screverton, and they're also circular, and it's suggested that all three were built by the same unidentified builder in the 19th century. Beyond the pinfold, the village ends, so let's turn around. Now let's have a look at the church which towers over the corner of Hawksworth Road. It's Scarrington's only Grade 1 listed building. 13th century in origin and dedicated to St John of Beverley, this was last restored between 1867 and 1869 by J. H. Hakewell. The south aisle was added at that time, but there was an original, which was removed in 1802. The vestry was also added in the 19th century, as were the chancel arch and the reredos. The tower has three bells, all dating from 1450, and it's topped with a spire, which can be seen for quite some distance across the surrounding farmland. All that remains is to walk up Hawksworth Road, which runs in a northeasterly direction towards the village of the same name. This takes us past the Old Hall. This was built in or around the year 1700 for the Shipman family, and has been a prominent landmark here ever since. You can catch a bus on this road, but they run infrequently. Scarrington is served by the number 856 between Loudham and Bottisford via Bingham twice a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Other than that, you definitely need a car to live in this one, but for most here, that's not a problem, as we already know. Okay, if you carry on walking up Hawksworth Road, it uh, just basically runs off into the countryside and eventually... There is a, a lane on the left-hand side, as you look at it, which goes up towards Car Colston. That will be next week's episode, and that's where I'm about to go uh, once I get out of this rain. It's not supposed to rain today. This is the thing. I had checked the weather forecast earlier and it was supposed to be fine and dry. Where this drizzle and mizzle has come from, I have no idea. But I suppose that's British weather and the weather forecast is usually wrong, isn't it? Anyway, that's the walk around Scarrington. There's one more thing still to cover though. There's also something else up this lane, which I need to put a few pictures in about because I can't get to it. It's, uh, it's private property, I'm afraid. So let's talk about that to finish, shall we? 
further along Hawksworth Road, the road name changes to Hawksworth Lane, and on the left is a big building set back from the street. That's Scarrington House, which dates from the early 19th century. The building itself is notable because it's listed, but so too are several other structures in the grounds, like a pigeon coat, a pump, a stable block, and a well. Not a lot is known about its history, but it was the home of a Mr Fisher in the 1850s, who was a farmer. Its grandeur is another surefire sign of Scarrington's wealth, especially if a farmer could call this home. There were several prosperous farmers who lived in this village, and it has been said before now that Scarrington and Cropwell Butler, which isn't too far away from here, were once the two richest places in Nottinghamshire. The inhabitants of the 19th century were rather fond of horse racing. In fact, Scarrington used to have a training stable once occupied by Robert Ludlow. They also liked gambling a lot, which I guess still goes hand in hand with that today. In those days there was a newspaper called The Owl, which reported the misdeeds and shortcomings of the local people. Allegedly, one of the Scarrington farmers appeared in the paper every week. Talk about being infamous. And that's it for Scarrington people. With this one behind us, we can move on to another place which definitely needs no introduction to money. It may not have ever been Nottinghamshire's richest village, but it does have another claim to fame. Join me there next week to see what it is. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.